We are now on the record, and this will be the case, State of Ohio versus Michael T. Dixon, 20 CR 0201, and Mr. Dixon is present with his attorney, attorney, excuse me, and uh, the prosecution team is here, and I believe we're going to be moving on to another witness after a short break. The next witness, please. State calls Detective Joe Kinnear. Raise your right hand. I you. solemnly swear a testimony you're about to provide in this cause is truth, the whole truth, and number two, self of God. All right, thank you. you can come around and have a seat. Once you are comfortable, pull the microphone in front of you, please. And uh, the press has expressed some interest in the case, and they've been streaming some of this, I gather, and also probably taking pictures of witnesses. Uh, you want to have your image published or would you rather not? Um, I'd rather not, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, so no pictures of this particular witness, please. All right. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name and spell your last name for us? Kevin Joseph Kinnear. Spelling your last name is K-I-N-N-E-E-R. All right, Detective Kinnear. Do you mind taking off your mask? If you feel comfortable, if you want it on, that's quite all right. Uh, but it'll certainly be easier for all the jurors to, to hear you. Now, I've referred to you as Detective Kinnear. What do you, what do, you do for a living? Um, I work for the uh, Hocking County Sheriff's Office. I'm what's considered a, a general detective. I've been there for almost four years now. Uh, prior to that, uh, actually, I started my law enforcement career here in, in 1982. So I did about 12 and a half years here. I left and did, a, I think, about nine months as a detective in Nelsonville. And I left and went to the State Board of Pharmacy and did just shy of 23 years where I retired. And I came back here. Okay. In your capacity as a detective here in the Hawking County Sheriff's Office, were you part of the investigation into the initial disappearance and then subsequently the, the homicide investigation of James Whitaker? Yes, I was. I want to talk about the early stages of the investigation. In particular, uh, the days between July 25th and uh, July 27th. When did you become aware that you were to assist or participate in the investigation of what happened with James Whitaker? On the 26th, that would be a Sunday. Were you on duty already that Sunday? No, I was not. I was actually off. I was called at home. Uh, I was told uh, by Lieutenant Champ, uh, which I was dispatched by a, when I say dispatch, I was actually called at home by dispatch. And uh, subsequently I was told that Champ, uh, Lieutenant Champ was investigating a missing person at that time who was James Whitaker, who lived on Chestnut Grove in the county of Hawking. And aside from that, you didn't have much to go on? No, that's pretty much the initial uh, information that I received, that the family members were concerned, and they were at the scene at the time, and they were requesting assistance. Did you know that, or did you come to learn that James Whitaker had some other people that lived with him at or near the time of his disappearance? Yes. Um, as uh, Actually, I've been out there on prior calls <laughs> Uh, so I w knew that Mike Dixon had, was living there at the time with James. I did not know that Melody Dixon was living there until at the time of uh, my arrival by, by talking with some of the family members and uh, Lieutenant Champ. And subsequently, I also made a phone call to uh, Lieutenant Dustin Robson, uh, talking with him about it. 
and he agreed to come out and assist me in trying to ascertain where Mr. Whitaker was. Okay. So knowing that Mr. Whitaker was missing, uh, knowing that there was Michael Dixon who lived with him was no longer in the area. What are your next steps on the, on the 26th? Initially, uh, we were to, uh, just canvass the area, meaning the property, the residence itself, uh, try to see one, whether or not Mr. Whitaker was anywhere around, whether or not he had actually passed away at the residence or was in the woods or something like that. It wasn't uncommon because I had contact with Mr. Whitaker in the past and he had told me himself that at times he goes for days at a time away from home. So at my initial thought was he's probably just gone to visit someone or something like that. However, talking with family members and especially the mother and, and uh, of Mr. Whitaker, it, it come to, I, I was, I was told that at least weekly, if not on a daily basis, at times he may actually call his mother. He had not since the 3rd of July. So that was obviously concerns at that time. Did you endeavor or did your office endeavor to find the whereabouts of, of Mr. Dixon? Yes, uh, we were told by family members that when they initially arrived, Mr. Dixon and Melody was at, their, at the residence. Um, my understanding was that they told them, told Mr. Dixon and Melody that law enforcement was on the way, their words, and they immediately left the residence. What did you guys do in order to track down Michael Dixon? Um, actually, I did a series of uh, follow-up on interviews uh, as far as with uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Strickland who indicated that uh, he may have gone to a Kenny uh, Amarine's residence or possibly to his uh, I believe it was his stepdad who actually he calls his dad, which is a Frank Species residence, uh, which was on Sam's Creek. Um, in the process, we also ran uh, leads, uh, search on Mike Dixon, found out there was actually a warrant for his arrest out of Fairfield County. I believe it was for failure to appear. Um, so at that time, we knew that we could possibly pick him up on the warrant itself if we actually located him. But the, that first day was solely spent trying to locate Mr. Whitaker. Well, like, let's move on to that next day then, the 27th. You mentioned uh, Kenny Amarine's place and you mentioned Frank Species' place. Did you attempt to locate Mr. Dixon at either of those locations? Yes, we did. I actually uh, went to Frank Species' residence found uh, Mr. Dixon at the residence and placed him under arrest at that point for the uh, warrant out of Fairfield. Okay. And prior to that, Mr. Dixon didn't come into the sheriff's office uh, You know, on the, after the 25th. He didn't go to the Laurel substation or down here in Logan to say, if you guys are looking for me, here I am, anything like that? No, he did not. Right. When you went to the, the species residence, and you found Mr. Dixon. We saw some of the deputies who have testified that they used to, they wear these badge or lapel or belt cameras. Did you also have one of those? Yes, it was on my belt. You mentioned that you had, there was an open warrant for some something out of another county. Um, did you stop and arrest him when you located him? Yes. When you did locate him and effectuate that arrest, did you also have an occasion to sit down and talk to him? Yes, uh, that particular day was extremely hot. Uh, I was, I'm going to say, into the 90s. Um, he met us outside, uh, I handcuffed him, uh, walked him over to the shade area of that residence, which was a trailer nearby, and he sat on that trailer. Uh, Miranda was given to him and I began to question him. Was there someone else with you at that day? There was a deputy, Matt Wittrick, that was also with me that day. Did he have a, a camera with him as well? Yes, he would have.
pull up a video for you, sir. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to play just the first few minutes of this, or the first few seconds, to see if you're able to identify what it is. Your Honor, I want to play for the witness here, which marked as State's Exhibit SS. It represents the year, the date, uh, I'm sorry, the year, the month, the date, and then the time, in military time. Okay, and what is the <coughs> year, month, date, and time? It would be 2020 of 07 being July 27th. Time is actually 3.58, almost 4 o'clock. This would be Matt's. Uh, video, not mine. All right, I've stopped the video at 17 seconds. Sorry, Technier, you mentioned that this was. Was this your video, sir? No, it's not. Okay, and whose video is this? I believe this is actually Matt's. Uh, this is a charger. I I have a, a different vehicle. Can you look at the uh, the sunscreen paneling on the top of the windshield? Can you tell that that says uh, maybe K9 or something K9. on the top? And and Matt does have a K9. Okay. That would be Mr. Frank's uh, species of residence. Is this where you found Mr. Dixon? That is correct. Seconds. We just saw an image off to the right hand side when we cut away. Did you recognize that individual? That's Matt walking up. Matt Whitrick, uh, Deputy Matt Whitrick walking up. That's his cruiser that's off in the distance right now. I'm going to scroll back just a second or so. Um, if you look off to the right side. I'm sorry, right that, that's actually myself. Okay. <laughs> What are you up to? You want to come out here and talk to this detective for me real quick? Stop that a minute and six seconds. Who is that right there, sir? That's Mr. Uh, Michael Dixon. And the individual that's speaking that said hello, who was that? That is Matt uh, Whitrick, deputy. <laughs> Or you just can't hang it in your mouth, keep smoking it yeah. if you want. That'll, yeah. that'll help you out. I've stopped it at uh, one minute, 29 seconds. What are you doing at this moment? I'm actually handcuffing him. Are you handcuffing him and arresting him for the suspicion of anything relating to James Whitaker? Not at this time. And what's the purpose of this? It's the warrant out of Fairfield. Is your dad here? Or? Okay. Is there anybody else here or just your dad? Dad and my daughter. Okay. Which which daughter's here? Melody. Melody? Okay. These aren't too tight, are they? Let me double snap. They're blocked. anything 
your arm or anything on you, so don't poke him, nothing like that. You have any infectious disease we need to know about? Hep C, MRSA, anything like that? Nope. All right. No, no drugs on or in you? Nope. All right. Nope. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you over here to this pine tree so you can stand in the shade. Detective Kinnear is going to go inside, talk to your pops real quick, okay? Is he able to come more? Your daughter? All right. You said Melody's in there? All right. Now at uh, two minutes and thirty-five seconds, can you explain what is happening now in this in this uh, this video? Me uh, Deputy Whitrick is going to walk uh, Mr. Dixon over to the shade, like I had said earlier, to let him sit down on that trailer that you cannot see right now because it's directly behind that cruiser. I'm going to let this up if you don't mind. No, nope. maybe I will. There was a witness who knew how to do this. Sir, if you could keep your voice up just a little bit. We unfortunately we've got jurors all the way in the back. I want to make sure they can hear as well. All right. So you're mentioning uh, what was happening now in this image, or this video. Deputy Whitrick is going to walk uh, Mr. Dixon over into the pine trees that you see off in the distance. There's a uh, shaded area right there, directly in behind of his uh, cruiser that you see. There's a trailer right there, and he's going to ask Mr. Dixon to sit on the trailer in the shade while I go talk to uh, Melody Dixon, uh, Michael Dixon's daughter. Why did you want him to sit in the shade on the trailer? Because it's about 95 with an index probably just over 100 degrees, okay. maybe 110. It felt every bit of it, I can tell you that, sir. Okay. And then so as the deputies taking... Mr. Dixon, over to the shaded area. You're heading back inside to speak with some other people in the residence? I'll go back up to the front door and uh, knock on it again. All right. There will be an occasion which we'll probably be able to look at that recording, but I want to fast forward now. Okay. Just going to pause it here at 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Earlier describing him going to a shaded area and sitting on a trailer. Is that what we see here? That is correct. Advising Miranda. Yes, sir. I haven't asked any questions, so. Mike. What, what did you just ask the, the deputy there? I was asking whether or not um, he had actually read the, uh, his Miranda rights to Mr. Dixon. Uh, he indicates that he has not. Because Mr. Dixon is in handcuffs, there's an assumption that he is in custody. He is being arrested for the uh, warrant out of Fairfield. I'm going to go ahead and advise him of his Miranda. Because you're in handcuffs, you're under arrest, you got a warrant up um, Fairfield County or someplace like that, I'm going to just give you a Miranda, all right? You've got the right to remain silent. Anything you can be, or anything you say can be, will be held against you in court of law. You've got the right to talk to a lawyer and, not have, and have him present with you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any statement or make any statement. Um, Having these rights in mind, do you have uh, any questions or anything you want to say? You want to talk to me about what's been going on at uh, Jim's house? And they say that you, I don't, your daughter come down a few days ago and said that I had to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. She's been gone, I think, since the 5th. Since the 5th? I believe that's when it was. So when you asked what's been going on at Jim's house. Does Mr. Dixon refer to anything about Jim? No. He mentions something about the daughter coming down and then nothing since the 5th. Correct. Well, I went down to, we ate dinner that night, Kenny and Ryan come down and asked him if I'd help him. It was about 10.30. I told him I'd come up and help. We worked on an air compressor until about 
3.30 that night, and when I got home, it wasn't there. So you asked a question about what's going on in the Whitaker residence, and he rattled off a long sentence about something on the fifth. Is that right? That is correct. Did you ask any questions about what happened on the fifth? No. Did you ask him where, if he was at Jim Whitaker's house or at Kenny Hammerines or anyone else's? No. So, had Jim been James, what do you call him? I call him Jim, but Jim, I okay. Name, James, but everybody yeah. calls him Jim. And I stayed up there with him for about two years. Did he have anything to say prior to you leaving that evening? He'd been talking to some girl or whatever, but he Who was the girl? I think it's, her name was Tracy, but I'm not for sure. Tracy? You know where Tracy lives? All according to Jimmy in Tennessee. So what is he telling you there about Tracy? He's telling me that uh, something about a Tracy that he might uh, uh, had mentioned, that Jim uh, mentions this name to him. Got it. I think he's quite a lot of smoke, to be honest. Okay. Stopping at 45 minutes and 11 seconds. Looks like it. the deputy walking away at this stage? Yes. Okay. Does he continue to walk away and go to another cruiser? I believe he walks over to the driveway area uh, out of sight. I'm going to fast forward. While you're continuing to interview, has the deputy walked away? Yes. You mentioned earlier, to clarify, were you also wearing a, a, a belt camera or a lapel camera? Yes, I have a camera uh, that's similar to what the deputy has on. It's located either on, on the vest or on the, my uh, belt area itself. I move it from time to time, but I believe this is around my belt area. Okay. I'm going to pull up what's marked as States Exhibit TT. And just like that first video we saw, we can take a look at the watermark at the top right of the screen. And what is the year, month, date, time? 2020, uh, 07 July 27th. Time is 4.45 p.m. Just like before, I'm going to uh, begin playing this and I'm going to make sure we can identify it before we continue. Pausing at eight seconds, we don't hear anything. Uh, can you explain why we're not hearing anything at this moment? I believe that for some reason, I'm not really sure, I cannot say why, but from the time that, that I left the front door of uh, Mr. F uh, Species' residence to the trailer, some per period of time there, the camera actually quit recording. Okay. So I hit it again. Okay. And there's a delay. Okay. Is why you're not hearing anything. I believe it's 30 seconds. Damn mess. Right. Skip ahead. 30 seconds. Here. Oh, I'm sure you guys have been up there in the house in such a damn mess. Right. I mean, we can't tell what what may be his property and what. Pause at 36. Or excuse me, 38 seconds. Do you recognize the voices on this recording? It would be myself and Mr. Dixon. Obviously, we can't see what's happening. Can you tell us what's going on with the image? I believe my vest is blocking the camera view. Could be anybody else. And pretty much all his, all my stuff's in the basement. In the basement? Is that where you guys stayed? That some tools I've got in the garage. Other than that, everything was his. And when you guys came home, that about what time do you think you left? First, about ten. About ten. 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 Um, yeah. In the morning, then. In evening. Evening. So you guys left in the evening mm -hmm. to go to Kenny's. Yep. And is his last name last name Emmerine? Yep. Emmerine. That's on Goose Creek.
And you guys got home the following morning. It was the same night, but it was real early, about four thirty. Oh, so so you left in the morning then? We left about in the evening, and we come back the next morning. Okay. All right. So, what time was that? In the morning. About four thirty. About four thirty. And then, then what? I went to his, well, I yelled for him because usually he's up about that time. He didn't come and I noticed he's like a piece of copper or something holding his door shut. And I thought that was kind of strange. So I went in there. He wasn't there. You asked what happened when he came back. What did he advise about uh, Jim Whitaker's door? He's indicating that they, there's a small piece of wire holding the door shut. There's a piece of copper holding the door shut? On the outside. Like a copper pipe? A little piece of copper wire. Copper wire? Because the door wouldn't stay latched. Okay, so... You went inside and what? After I yelled for him and he didn't come out and I seen the wire, I opened up the wire and noticed he was gone and noticed that his gum was missing. And nothing else except for the TV? Nothing I could tell now. Okay. He might have had a book bag closed. He always did, but there's so much stuff up there. Hell, I don't know. No. Stuff, it, stuff piled to the ceiling. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, hard to tell what all. And then his daughter there. comes saying, oh, I was getting rid of this stuff. I didn't get rid of nothing. He was like a dad to me. Hell, I've been up there with him for two years. Yeah. And were you there at the time of that shooting when somebody drove by and shot at his house? Yep. Yeah. And... What was that over? Don't know. He says it was over some girl that he was with, Andrea. Andrea, yeah, she something. got. She's a, I think she's in prison. She is for heroin or something. So, do you, where do you think uh, Jim is? I wish I knew. You don't know? Have any idea where he's at? No. Did you uh, see any sign of any kind of a struggle or anything like that? I didn't. You didn't? And there's nothing to indicate that anything had happened to him? No. No. And, I mean, you have no idea where he might be? Do you no. think that something's happened to him? I kind of wondered because he could go down to the gas station and he'd leave me a note where he was going. Mm hmm. And what day do you think that this was? When when you guys left? I paused there at 5 minutes 11 seconds. So you just asked five different ways if he knew anything about where Jimmy was. What was his answer? He didn't, he didn't know. It was the fourth or fifth, I know. Because fourth or fifth. The fourth, I believe, we had a cookout, and I'm thinking it was the next day. Because he was talking about all this fourth of July, he didn't do anything. So we had a cookout. I had a good day, I thought. What did you guys have to eat? Hamburger, hot dogs, and steak. Nothing wrong with that. Where'd you get the food from? Food Town. Food Town? Where's that at? In Lorville. In Lorville. 
Is that Young's Pharmacy? Is that what you're Young's? Young's Family Pharmacy. Okay. And so you guys had that that day? Yep. What time do you guys go to bed that night? About 10, 11. 10, 11. Was everything okay then? Yeah. And then you guys got up the following day then? Mm -hmm. And that's, do you think that you guys, what did you guys all do that day? For a little while, my daughter's car is sitting up there in the driveway. I just got a motor for it, and I started working on the motor. She lost the keys. I couldn't get it in the garage. But I had a few things I had to change on the motor first. I Did he mention that, that he was missing a key to get into the garage? Yes. Is that indicating the garage on the Whitaker property? Yes. So he was unable without a key to get in. That is correct. Getting there, Brad. He hoping she'd find the keys. How long did you work on that? Probably about three, four hours. About three hours. Three, four hours. And then trying to clean the garage where I could get it in there. It's about like the house. Yeah. And then, so that would have put you about what time if, when you quit working on it? About 3.30. 3.30, you think? And then, what did you guys do then? Went in the house, watched TV for a little bit. Well, actually, don't have TV. Got on the internet. Okay. You watch movies off the internet, off Wi-Fi, whatever it's called. Yep. What did you guys watch? I don't remember what it was. Some my daughter picked out. Did you watch the end of it? Mm, is that when you guys left? It wasn't long after it wasn't that. Not long after that? About an hour or two. And anything happened prior to that? Prior to you guys leaving? No. No. And I fed my dog. Is there any chance, Mike, that you guys got into an argument and something happened? What he's telling me doesn't make any sense to me at this point in time. I also know that Mr. Whitaker was last documented alive on the 4th of July. He purchased items at the Murphy, uh, it's a grocery store gas station in South Bloomingville. Credit card actually documented that he purchased uh, $27 and some odd cents of gas, and then he also went into the food grocery store itself and he purchased another item in there but due to records uh, with that particular credit card they were unsure how much dollar amount that was and that's through the uh, store manager what as day? well as through chase what day was that purchase again that was on the 4th of uh, july at 8:03 and 8 10 p.m Whole time I've been up there, we've gotten into two arguments. And do you think that uh, I've heard that he was depressed he at was times? Depressed. And anything about that? We talked about killing himself before, and I always told him it wasn't worth it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's what's happened to him? I'd like to hope not, but he kept talking about it, and then he talked about some well or something that no one would find him. And where's that at? He never did tell me. Can you give some context to Mr. Dixon's answer there about a well? 
he indicates that there is a well uh, structure, rock structure that Mr. Whitaker had indicated uh, about during hunting season or being walking in the woods to get out of the rain that you could walk under this structure. He also indicates that at some point that he talked about uh, possibly walking off and making sure that nobody would ever find him by falling into this well. Does this suggest that it's a place that Mr. Whitaker could be? It is. I don't see if that'd be the case if he took the TV and his gun. I mean, right. the gun maybe, but not the TV. Right. Is it possible that somebody else took the TV? I really wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so? Because there was no prime marks or no nothing. I had to use my key to get in. Okay. And, uh, and if the TV was gone, my thinking, so it's not, you had to have somebody there. Did He's you notice know whether or not the shells were missing as well for the gun? Huh? Any shells missing for the gun? I really didn't look, but I'd say so. He's got shells everywhere. Got shells there. everywhere? Okay. And I'd say he's probably got a thousand rounds up there for it. Mm. But he talked about a well. Mm -hmm. Where's the well at? I was thinking it'd be within walking distance because he said he could walk there. I've walked all them woods the last couple of weeks and I never could find nothing. Because that's what I thought. So you went looking for him then? Quite a few times. And somebody to just let you know, come and move in our house. We got pretty close. And I've been up there, like I told you, two years. Yeah. But he talked about suicide quite often. Mm -hmm. Because his kid couldn't, his wife died, I think, three, four years ago. None uh -huh. of his kids are, would come see him. His grandkids, he wasn't allowed to see. That bothered him a lot. Well, he got to talk to his daughters very often either, did he? No. It's like Jolie, the one that's making all this stink now about all oh, I supposedly did this and I did that. She's crazier than hell. She ain't talked to him in damn near a year. It's been a year. Hmm. She's trying to tell me, oh, I was just here two weeks ago. No, she wasn't. So the well, where's where's it located at? He didn't say. He just told me it was in walking distance. Walking distance. On his property? Mm -hmm. No, it's not on his property. Because all he's got is like nine or ten acres, and I know all of it. Okay. If you were to guess where you think it might be. I was kind of thinking down the road there's a, well, it's not a trailer. They built a little black building. It's kind of funny looking. I, he was all the time looking up in there and he said there was like an old cave back in the woods right there and it's got a front on it. And he said there was one up there before. Did you go look at this? Uh, not the well, but I've been up there before with him where the little cave thing is. Did you go try to look at it, though? I looked around it, yeah, seen if I seen anything. I didn't. You couldn't find the well, or you did mm. find the well? No, I no. couldn't. I found the cave thing, but no well. When you say cave thing, what's that? It's just like a big hole, like back in the side of the rock. And it's got someone built like a front on it. Oh, like a like a could be like a, an old building for like a, in the old days for your vegetables. Is that what you're talking about? Are you talking about a cistern or in the ground or in no, the hillside? It's in the back of the hillside, with the rock. The back of the hillside. With a rock like come out, and you can go back in it. Does he describing? Different occasions on which he went out to look for James Whitaker since July 5th? That's my understanding. 
then one day he'd take his medicine, the next day he wouldn't. He had sugar. Hmm. So what do you think has happened to Jim? I'm hoping nothing. I'm hoping he just took off, but I don't know why. Don't you think it's kind of funny that you guys would have a, a good day before us and nothing on the, yeah. anything that happened that day and watch a movie on the, on the 5th and you guys leave and he's not there. And we've been talking to Andrea's people again. Dad noticed they've been up there about four, three, four times. Supposedly the people that have just been before, he says. I want to make sure I understand what he said. Something about Andrea's people? He's indicating that um, a prior uh, occurrence, he's talking that Jim supposedly informed him that he was kidnapped. Okay, so that maybe Jim is gone now because of an abduction? Correct. Or kidnapping? That did what? That took him before? That's what he said. He said they abducted him and took him to oh, hell, Arizona. Somehow he managed to escape. And Jim said that? Yeah. When so did that sort of happen? I'm trying to think how long Andrea's been in jail. It had to be about two and a half, three years ago because it was before I went up there. Uh, well, Jim, oh, I'm sorry, Mike, the family is trying find what has happened to them. I know they didn't get along, but yet on a day-to-day -day basis he would talk with his mom. You know, at least I was going to say that was the only one to talk to was his yeah. mom. Well, don't you think it'd be nice for her to at least know where he's at and if he has died, to be able to bury him? Yeah. I mean, if you had a loved one that you really cared about, wouldn't you like to have I'd like to have know closure. that closure. Yeah. So do you think you could help me out with that? If I can. Well, where do you think he is? I have no clue. So you don't know where he might be at all. Not really. No. Not all the places I thought he might be. I don't want to find him like that. Yep. You can't find, don't know, or anything like that. Nope. Couldn't find him. And I've tried. And nothing to indicate where he might be or anything like that. Eh? Nope. At least no, 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 nothing. And, uh, I mean, if you're going to, you would think that if he was going to maybe do himself in, he might leave a note for you guys or his family, his or mom. Or leave a note or something. Why did you suggest uh, asking him about looking for a note? It was referred to me by Melody uh, Dixon Pryor. Something that was in my daughter's stuff, but Brandy, one of his daughter's ex or oh hell boyfriends, I showed it to him and he told me Jim was probably mad when he wrote it. Don't pay no attention to it. That's up at the house. Was it dated? I don't remember if it was dated or not. It's on the white cabinet on the bottom shelf. On the white cabinet and bottom shelf. Mm -hmm. When you first walk into like where the kid. Your Honor, may we approach for a moment? Yes, you may. All right, so this is an opportune place to take, uh, take a break uh, for the rest of the day. So. Uh, I'm going to be releasing you here in a moment so you can go home and we'll expect to resume at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning sharp. And as I've told you on a number of occasions, do not discuss this case among yourselves. Do not permit anybody to discuss it with you or in your presence. 
it's your duty not to form or express any opinion on the case until it's finally submitted to you. So I uh, look forward to seeing you all here uh, bright and early, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, okay. All right, and we hope to get started right at 9 o'clock. I've got something I've got to do at 8.30. How many videos do we have? Oh, four. Hmm. All right, so we'll probably start a little later than that under the circumstances, so about 9.15 then. All right, I'll give you enough time to get the videos that need to get done done. All right, then. Uh, anything else from council before we take a break for the day? Not at this time, Nora. Thank you. All right, thank you. So at this point, uh, your excuse. See you tomorrow morning at 9.15.